Hey guys, today we are going to talk about the increasing cost of Magic. Not only in the sense of, oh, Magic cards are getting more expensive, but sealed product as well. In 2015, it was announced that for Wizard of the Coast, we're charging more per pack, more per box for the distribution level. And that, of course, caused local game stores to have to charge more per pack. I remember paying less than $3 a pack. And this was in the good old days of Nemesis and beyond. For a store to charge more than $3 a pack in Nemesis and McKady Mask, I wouldn't pay that much. And luckily for me, I didn't because there was no good cards in those sets. However, we've seen price increases for booster boxes, for dual decks now. The newest dual deck, Might Mine vs. Might, has a increase of $5. And this might not seem like a lot to you, but as a percentage, it's a large jump. It is a jump of 25%. Uh, Wizard of the Coast is a business. So it wants to capture the largest amount of profit possible at any given time. So if charging $5 for this dual deck can, and people are still gonna buy it in the same quantities, then they've made $5 per profit. Now, Magic cards are only going to get more and more expensive. They are never going to get cheaper. And that's because of production cost, overhead, uh, if they want to hire their new Magic digital team, digital next team, it all has to come from somewhere. And this increase of 25% for a dual deck is quite noticeable because dual decks are supposed to be introduction level or I guess Planeswalker decks are the most intro level and they are more expensive than the regular introduction decks that used to be available. But even the dual decks themselves as a fun casual thing has gone up in price. Uh, this is obviously different from the old team. And I don't know how I feel about it. I would love to read some comments from you. I, my gut feeling is this is not worth $25 and this particular dual deck, dual deck is very bad. It doesn't feature any planeswalkers, which are five to $10. It does not feature any chase cards, in my opinion. It does have 20 rare cards, but they are all very bulky um, and they're not, most of them are not even worth a dollar. So this particular dual deck at $25 is an interesting price point to put it at. Uh, I can see $20 and then you pay $10 for your deck, your friend pays $10 for his or her deck, and then you can play it. $25 just seems a little, kind of a weird number to put it. Now, if they can sell as many of these for $25, of course they will continue to keep the price point. But Magic as a whole, not just from the single card market or the secondary market, is more expensive. Now you have Modern Master boxes at 200, you have Eternal Masters boxes at 180. These, this premium item or this premium type of sale will only continue more and more. Dual, uh, Anthologies is a good example of that. So let's take a look at the deck list and see if we can identify any valuable cards. Larissa Kodai's is the main chase card of the set, and that's an interesting one to have because it's not particularly valuable. Definitely not as valuable as maybe a Planeswalker that you could put here. You have Rada, you have Zoo, Zoo uh, Relentless Hunter, you have Rumble Belt Raiders, Kamal. These are all rares, but they're not really that pricey. You do have a Coat of Arms, which is an interesting one. Uh, coat of Arms being something that is quite valuable and something that is fun, or I guess not fun to play in EDH because then everyone's counting random stuff all the time. But you do have a harmonized, you have Call of the Herd, which is a rare and increasing. So you do have a good amount of rares in each deck. They're just not, there's not one card I can point out, maybe Coat of Arms, but there's not a card I can really point out that will say this makes up half the cost of the deck. On the other side, you have Jory, you have Jorel, you have two young Pyromancers, which have been reprinted quite a bit. Deep Sea Kraken, the Unspeakable. 
Uh, those two are the definition of both cards. You do have a mind's desire here, which is kind of nice. And you have a desperate ritual, which is okay. Uh, cooking is okay. Snap. Rift Bolt is a pricey common. Grape Shot is played sometimes empty. Uh, overall, it's a fun deck. It looks like a lot of fun. I just don't know if it justifies increasing the price point to $25. Even at $20, I don't believe there's enough value, especially after these prices go down to justify a $20 deck where the main cards are worth, you know, $5 maybe. Maybe $5 on a good day, probably much less. Overall, the $5, 25% increase on in price is a lot for Magic the Gathering. If 25% increase in boost packs right now, which... I believe the MSRP is over $4. I see them at $4.20 at Target, $4.19 where I am at Target and Walmart. A 25% increase there would make a booster pack over $5. That seems like where we are going to head. I don't feel like this increase in price will be a standalone. I feel like it's a test. Obviously, Wizards of the Coast knows people are willing to pay $200 a booster box. Uh, for that same booster box, they sell for $140. Uh, they they know what the price point is, so depending on what they put in the dual deck, maybe it, a dual deck will come up where it will be $25 or more because they put a good Planeswalker. Maybe they put in the Chandra, uh, the newest Chandra or the newest Nicol Bolas, and that creates a system, it creates a reason for people to buy at that price. Anyway, that's it guys. Bye.